Hi there, I'm Shauna Robbins and I'm doing an interview with Authority Magazine and I am so thrilled today to have the privilege of being able to interview Deborah Sindranu. She is the Managing Director of Essence Group Fiji. She moved to Fiji in the 1990s and established the South Pacific Beauty and Spa Academy, spa operations and consultancy, along with manufacturing skincare products sold, totally, lo sold locally and exported internationally. Deborah's passion and business model is centered around impacting the livelihood of women in Fiji and supporting the economic development goals there. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Hi, Shona. Vula, I should Thank say. You. Right? That's it. Vula, vula. <laughs> All right. So I have to give some background on this. Deborah and I met on um, my most recent trip to Fiji. We actually sat next to each other on the airplane and we had such an amazing conversation that I asked her if she would be willing to be interviewed by me for Authority Magazine, because I felt that she absolutely fit the part of a powerful, influential woman. And I wanted her to be a part of my Powerful Woman series. So she is here today. Thank you, Shauna. I really appreciate it. And it's great to meet like-minded women and um, yeah, be a part of what you do as well. Thank you. Ah, wonderful. Okay, so tell me how you got started in your line of work. Um, so I've been in this industry for around 40 years, uh, and when I first moved to Fiji, I saw that there was a desperate need to um, A, develop Fiji's spa tourism industry, but also to impact the women and livelihoods of um, the communities here. So the spa and wellness industry was just such a perfect alignment to be able to do that. Uh, so in 1998, I opened Fiji's first training academy, uh, Spa Academy Fiji, a Sodesco internationally accredited school. Uh, and that was when we first started to make impact on women by creating employment for our graduates. All right, so tell me. Then, oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. Please finish. I was just going to say, so from there then we saw that there are a lot um, of other channels that we could work towards to support women through the spa and wellness industry. So here we are 40 years later or 30 years later, uh, manufacturing skincare products out of Nama sea grapes, which impacts all the women of the Yasawa Islands who do all of the wild harvesting for us. So it's a really holistic approach to supporting women um, by providing um, training, um, revenue, and um, just growth and development. So women in Fiji, I was just there and they are so beautiful and kind and warm. But from what I understand, they, if, you know, they get married at 18 and they have a family and that's what's expected of them. There's not a lot of education. There's not a lot of opportunity. So tell me about how your business is really changing this sort of social structure for women in Fiji. It definitely is. I think, um, one of the, the exciting things that we saw some time back, Australian Government, uh, DFAC, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, had an independent person come in and do a story, um, or not a story, sorry, do an impact um, research program on our company, on what we're actually doing and what the outcomes are. They went around and interviewed all of the, not all, but many of the graduates from our academy for and. Uh, spoke to them to see what impact we had had, where they are today, how many years they ago they had graduated. And to read the report was really quite phenomenal for me. Like, even though we know that we're making an impact, sometimes you're just so busy doing it that you don't sit back to reflect. And that report really opened my eyes. You know, these women have become... Um, their status is elevated within their homes and their communities because normally it's the men that would you know be the the providers. So becoming financially independent had you know um, increased the level of their status within their community. It had also given them confidence that they just didn't have before. Uh, it gave them the power to be able to have children and be able to make decisions about where the money goes. It it just really highlighted the importance of supporting women from rural communities that just normally would not have these opportunities. Mm, that's wonderful. Mm, I love that. So talk to me about you as a powerful woman. That's what this series is about. So not only elevating other women, which is such a source of power for you, 
but also, you know, having your own business, you know, being widowed, all of the things that you have gone through in your life. Um, what do you attribute your success to? What are the what are the skills or mindset that you have that you can share that, you know, really have allowed you to be a leader, not only in your industry, but in your community? I think I'll put this back to my mom. Um, we always have, a, I think, a family story that, um, you know, helps us to become the women that we are. Um, you know, my mom didn't have the opportunities that I had. And, you know, it was a different era then. And she was subjected to not the most pleasant things in life. And, you know, I will, I've, I've got so much to thank her for because as a young girl, she continuously told me that when I grow up, I will be confident and I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. She literally drummed that into me. Um, and I always remember my grandmother saying to her, stop telling her that. She'll grow up full of herself and conceited. <laughs> but it actually really did mould me to grow up with an inner confidence. And I think confidence is everything. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve so much. And I think as a businesswoman and, and entrepreneur now, um, one of the other things I do now is support other SME women that are starting up new businesses. And often I'm asked to speak at Pacific Island Women Forums um, and local government forums uh, just to, to show SMEs, predominantly women, you know, that, that it is not easy to, to A, to start a business or to be, um, to, to, to achieve the goals that we aspire to achieve. But I think if you have the confidence, the will and the drive, you know, women can achieve anything. And I think they love to hear the hardships that I've been through and the challenges. And for me to be able to say to them, whether it be personally or whether it be in business, um, to be able to show them and speak to them at a level that says, you can do this. You know, anything is achievable, but we must not give up because there is always support systems. I'm really big on networking. I'm really big on, you know, having the confidence to reach out to people and other women um, and talk about things. If you don't, then you become insular and you try to solve things on your own. Um, you know, that's when, when it's a lot harder. So part of my mentoring is about teaching women to connect, to network, reach out and believe in yourself and collectively we can achieve our goals. Mm, that's such a great message. I love that. So what do you feel is one of the biggest factors that powerful women, women leaders, entrepreneurs are having to deal with right now? Uh, and just whether it's a struggle or a challenge or something that you feel um, that needs to be overcome in our society or in our world as a whole. I think, especially in, in a country like Fiji, there is still that um stigma of you know if you're a woman you can't achieve what a, a man achieves um it, you know in in the pacific islands we still are very much male dominated um, um countries it's slowly changing but we're a long way away from that and i think the main thing is the more women that achieve and have a voice and have the confidence to walk into male forums and not feel intimidated and show what we are able to do because we are very capable women. You know, I think men then just look at us as, you know, the, the respect changes because they look at our accomplishments rather than our, you know, feminine side or the fact that we are women or our gender. They actually respect our voice. So I think if we can make ourselves heard without trying to over sell ourselves or overprove ourselves just go in there and let people know what we do and what we accomplish and do it with pride and the respect comes and i think that the more that women do that we're going to elevate um women just as a total uh, or as a totality and men will start to realize that we are making change and they need us <laughs> wow deborah i love absolutely everything about that so tell me a little bit about Nama Fiji. I um, was so lucky to be able to have access to your spa and to try your products. And I really want to learn a little bit more about, I even tasted the seaweed and it was quite delicious actually. So I want to learn more about what you're doing um, in Fiji and then outside of Fiji to really raise, raise awareness 
for not only your products, but for the women that are contributing to making such beautiful, high quality products for you. Thanks, Shauna. Um, my background before I came to Fiji was for lassotherapy. Um, so treating the skin and body with seaweed. So I've always been obsessed with philosotherapy. Um, and then not realizing that one day I would end up in Fiji surrounded by seaweed, right? So uh, my late husband was from the Asawa Islands. Um, and he was the one who introduced me to Nama sea grapes as food. Um, and at that stage, I was exploring um, the other types of seaweeds in Fiji to create a Falasso skincare brand. And I was just sitting there eating the Nama and I thought, wow, you know, Nama to me is so exotic. Nama is the Fijian word for sea grapes. And as you know, they're very plump and iridescent green. They're like a sea pearl. And when you bite them, they burst in your mouth. And I just found the whole exoticness of the, the Nama sea grape so incredible. So I worked with James Cook University ACR uh, in Australia to look at all the properties of the sea grapes compared to other seaweeds. And we were very, very fortunate to find that the, the minerals and the beneficial properties of Nama um, showed us that they are an organic, vegan hyaluronic acid. So most people know that, or may not know, that hyaluronic acid in skincare uh, comes from bacteria in the laboratory or animals. Nama replaces that being vegan and organic. It has an intra and intercellular um, hydration plumping effect on the dermal cells. And it also is an incredible product for treating rosacea and vascular dilation, any cuprose or redness. Um, and it's also detoxifying. So it's an amazing resource. Um, uh, and of course, we have trialed and tested all of this in our academy over the years with incredible results. But most importantly, it's impacting our women harvesters. Uh, the women harvesters for me is a project that is very, very dear to my heart. Um, you know, these women would not normally have any income whatsoever. So this is providing them with income just for really basic essential things like school books for the children, you know, um, school shoes, things that we just take for granted in the Western world that, you know, we can afford on a daily basis. So the women themselves are so grateful for this. And our women have learned from their forefathers how to break the Nama so that it replenishes within two to three weeks. So the Nama skincare brand is also extremely sustainable and we're not raping and pillaging from the environment. And that's something our brand is very, very focused on. We have um, glass and bamboo packaging where no plastic, Everything we do is about the Blue Pacific, the environment, giving back to communities, and of course, having an outstanding skincare brand that has amazing outcomes. Uh, we're now exporting to six countries globally, which is very exciting. It's been a very big year for us after a lot of uh, struggles, you know, as everybody had during COVID, we were held back with our global launch, but we've now got to where we need to be with a lot more to come. So very exciting times. Are you in the U.S. or in Canada? We have just launched in the U.S. and we're just launching in Canada now. Uh, so we do have namafiji.com, which is our site in the U.S. And as we speak, we're, um, I've attended about four or five trade shows in the U.S. this year. Spartec was the most recent one. Uh, we went to Cosmoprov in Vegas. So we've got some really um, strong partnerships about to evolve now with um, some very, very um, uh, you know, quite renowned um, spas and, and hotels uh, in the U.S. Wow. Deborah, I'm so impressed, as always, as I was for the first moment I met you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I can attest to your product. I think it's wonderful. And I really, really, really enjoy it. And I'm really glad that you were here with me today. Thank you, Shauna. And um, just, yeah, thank you so much for letting me have this opportunity. And thank you for caring about women and all that you do. Vinaka. Vinaka.